Big Hero 6 came up, and uh-huh. I have not seen it. And Brett Hermanson said the ending of the movie. Oh. He didn't know I hadn't seen it. Oh, you were never going to see that movie. And I then tore into him for like a minute and a half about how, yes, I am going to see the movie. Maybe I'll have a kid someday. Maybe I'm saving it for then. Maybe it just hasn't hit me on that right day that I'm going to see Big Hero 6. Just all of these different reasons why he should not have said the ending of Big Hero 6. Afterwards, I was like, man, I really should apologize to Brett for making him feel bad. Because he did feel bad. But then I realized he should feel bad for giving away the ending of Big Hero 6. Nice one, Brett. Yes. There's a certain amount of people out there that think that if you haven't seen the movie by the ending of opening weekend, it's your own damn fault. Yeah, well, we've been accused of that on this very show. But we don't really do very recent movies that everyone wants to see. Well, we did that one time. One of our viewers got very upset. What movie? And he's no longer one of our viewers. What movie? The Martian and The Revenant. Oh, yeah. Which we, we gave away the two most obvious spoilers in cinema history. He makes it home, and he makes it home. I felt a little bit weird about talking about any of those movies, too. Particularly The Revenant. If you know anything about them, you know that those things happen. But, if you know anything about them. Yeah, but still. Look at the poster for The Martian. It says, bring him home. Mm-hmm. You know he's going to come home. Yes. <laughs> Unboxing. Ding. He's absolutely right. Welcome to Unboxing, where we are going to dip into our mailbag, and we're going to talk about our generous donors, people who go to to welcometothebasementshow.com and donate to help support our show. It's such a gratifying thing to know that that is what people do. All of this means a lot to us, and it's good to know that it means a lot to you, too. And some recent donors include Maura, Brian, Michael, Kelsey, Alexander, Jacqueline, Tristan, Analog, Robot, Casey, Isabel, Aaron, Patrick, Cody, Abraham, David, Lindsay, and Jitesh, who says, I accidentally donated some money to you guys. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. Et cetera. Et cetera. And now we have a couple of questions from fans like Chris Alessandrini, who writes, Michael Keaton or Christian Bale? Oh, he's talking about Batman. Is he? I thought he was just talking about just in, in general. All right. In general, Michael Keaton or Christian Bale? Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton, yeah. But who do you think is a better actor? Christian Bale. Yeah. Uh, who would you rather go on a road trip with? Michael Keaton. He's funnier. Christian he's... Bale's cranky. Patricia Whitstone writes, Has there ever been a technical difficulty that nearly ruined an episode? L- a lost episode, maybe? One time, Tona, the camera person, showed up drunk to the set. She did not drive. I will say that in her favor. But she went to a party that afternoon and had a little too much to drink. So by the time she got here, she was all blaggle, blah, flaggle. <laughs> and it made things... A little tough. What episode was that? That was the Magician episode. The same episode, I was unhappy with our discussion of it, and so we came back in and we put on our old clothes and we redid the discussion. The Magician episode was fraught with problems. Lousy stinking. What? He went to Batman school. Might one inquire what this is? No, one might not. Go polish the silverware, Alfred. It's another cave, all right. Could be as big as the house, judging from the number of bats that came out of it. I've got me a cave. It's as big as the house, and I'm about to go in it. Hmm. Freeze! Freeze! Rock, 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 rock. Oh. And don't ever come down. Free base. There are certain advantages to having a sturdy cranium, Master Bruce. Slap. Huh, Warner Brothers. I see it. It's a pretty piss poor Easter egg. <laughs> if only they had gotten that historic landmark status, none of this would have happened. Batman doesn't die. What? It's true, he doesn't die. Here are our postcards. We've got one from our buddy Andrew who says, Congratulations on your 100th episode. Thank you, Andrew. This is from Michaela on her cross-country journey from Milwaukee to New York. Watch out for Lake Michigan. It's kind of wet. And this is from Wyatt and Allie over there in Alaska. They said they wanted to send a cheesy postcard. You otter be here. Oh, but how cheesy can it be? Because otters are adorable. Nom, 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 nom. I don't know, guys. All right, we have a couple of things here that I suspect might be postcards. Hmm, Open that up. How do they know? Whoa, Batman! Somebody's been reading my thoughts and sent me a Batman thing. 
This little envelope here, we got a couple of postcards and a little bit of scratch. Woohoo! Five bones. Thank you, Alex and Mary, who say things are warming up here in South Texas with triple digit heat. Hope it's cooler in the basement. Big Bend National Park postcard there. And a little Spanish movie here by Luis Bunuel. Mm. Nice. Madeline from Summers, Wisconsin sends us a picture of us <laughs> as Tetsuo. Cecil and, er and Ernesto, too. Oh, that's so cute. Tonight's poem is inspired by a movie that I bet you haven't seen. Really? Try me. It's called Telstar, and it is inspired by the film Telstar, a biopic about British record producer Joe Meek. I have not seen it. Now, if you're not familiar with the history of Joe Meek or with the movie Telstar, this poem gives away quite a significant spoiler. I know some of you are quite upset by spoilers, but I have a simple solution for you. When you see the title of this poem on the bottom of your screen, just hit mute on your computer or your television, and when the title disappears, you know that you can unmute it and continue watching the episode. That will keep you spoiler-free. This is Telstar, and it begins with a quote from the film. All my time is spent catching up. Every time I look up, everything's changed, and I have to catch up again. Why does everyone want to hurt me? Please be my friend. Please help me. Intense creation avoids sunlight. It prefers dark, stifling rooms, spinning spools of magnetic tape, or paint-stained fingernails, bad sleep, rings of dried wine on table edges. Intense creation avoids invoices, second notices, urgent phone calls, friendly advice, and plaintive requests to face reality. Intense creation blooms in solitude, thrives in staleness, a wild ragged flower with pale green tendrils reaching away from the sunlight and toward the shadows. And when brown-suited men come into the room where intense creation dwells, to tear the covers off the windows, intense creation shrinks, Intense creation avoids. Joe Meek puts the barrel in his mouth, pulls the trigger, and after the scarlet flower of sound, the echo in the hallway, his body on the stairs twitches in rockabilly spasms, like a dead Eddie Cochran, or a dead Buddy Holly, or a dead Elvis, or any other dead thing. His final act of intense creation. Not a bad movie. You should check it out. It is now time for the Zatoichi Report. My quest to watch all 25 Zatoichi sequels in 2016 continues. What's Zatoichi up to this week? Well, in Zatoichi's pilgrimage, he's on a pilgrimage. Oh, well, that, that's good. He's going to visit all of the 88 temples in Japan or some such thing to try and stop killing. But if we know Zatoichi, we know that that's not going to happen. This movie is not as good as some of the previous entries. I'm not sure if that's because it's just not as good or if the formula is starting to wear on me. But some interesting things do happen in this. He cuts off a guy's hand, not because he's a thief, but because he's a bad thief. And he adopts a horse. Oh. Who can read. These are starting to get a little strange. I'd like to share with you an interesting story from Wayne Dorrington, who is our graphic artist over there in the UK. He made a little movie poster for our last episode, The Battleship Potemkin, featuring Isaac Hayes. Here's a shot of that once again. And Wayne shares an interesting story about that movie. I saw it on an outdoor screening at Trafalgar Square in London with an amazing live music score played by the Pet Shop Boys. <laughs> I am rarely jealous of people... <laughs> But I think in this instance, I am quite jealous of Mr. Dorrington. Odessa boys and Danamo. Eastern block boys and West End girls. There we go. Let's open some packages. All right. This is from Tim over there in Canada. Hey, the best of Bob Newhart. Nice. Is uh, the Empire State Building on that? Uh, is that King Kong? I imagine so, yes. yes. King Kong is on. Oh, the driving instructor. That's a funny bit. Bob Newhart, he knows I like comedy. I got some other stuff in here, too. Some more postcards. Three, to be exact. Ooh, all right. And a letter from Tim. Greetings from Canada. Oh, God, they have a bridge going out to Prince Edward Island now. I took the ferry back when I was a kid. Something with my neighbor Totoro on it from the Ghibli Museum. Ooh, neat. Yeah, it's, it opens up. It's a little stained glass window. It's like a little piece of art. Yeah, it is. Miyazaki mixed with Mark Chagall here. Who's that from? Jessica H. Thank you, Jessica. Yes. Ah, whoa, this is chock full of business. Wow. We got some records here from Sean. I like this one. Fleet Foxes, Helplessness Blues. I got this on CD, but I don't got it on vinyl. Alela 
Diane, Alela Dion, about farewell. I don't know this at all, me, but I'm looking neither. forward to it. Matt and Craig love the show. Here are a couple of my favorite albums for you to enjoy. P.S. Lady Gandalf, my cat, sends a big sexy thumb kiss to Cecil. Paw kiss. Yes. Well, we got some treats in the mail from our viewers, and we've got some uh, nice donors who have helped us out. And so that concludes unboxing. You can see the new episode of Welcome to the Basement this coming Friday. We hope to see you then. Yes, thank you very much. And they have sex, cartoon sex, which happens off screen. But you can imagine it's probably lots of like, or tentacles. There's also that possibility. <laughs> She's not wearing no pants. That's what I like to see in my cartoons. <laughs> so you must love Porky Pig. Porky Pig, Donald Duck, all of the pantsless legends of old. Yep.